it's a big claim being made that it's not possible to avoid this. Not everyone agrees, including the IPCC and some scientists as well. Do you accept at least this part is contested? Modelling can have big variance in, in climate. Well, look, I think there's multiple lines of evidence that we put forward here to make a very, very convincing case uh, that it's going to be virtually impossible to hold a uh, temperature below 1.5 without overshoot and drawdown. Now, that's an important qualifier because overshoot means we temporarily go over 1.5 and then we use technologies which draw CO2 out of the atmosphere to bring it back down. Now, those don't exist yet at scale. There's mm. a lot of research on them. But uh, for, for, as far as we can see from looking at the momentum in the climate system, system the physics of the climate system, and a so-called carbon budget, as well as past changes in the, in the global climate, it is indeed virtually impossible to keep temperature below 1.5. So, so what's changed in the past couple of years? Is it mainly the trajectory, what carbon's being used, or is there other factors, yeah. echo effects, um, methane? A lot of talk about how much yes. methane might be coming out of various permafrost and it was more than previously thought? Indeed, you've, you've hit on some of the issues. One is climate change is accelerating. So, in other words, the rate at which the climate system is changing, that rate is going up. So, in other words, temperatures are rising faster than they were 30 years ago. We can also see sea level rise, which is an important one, uh, because that uh, is, is controlled mainly by ocean and ice. They have a lot of momentum. That's accelerating. And as you said, we can start to see uh, some of the so-called tipping points, which push more carbon into the atmosphere in addition to human emissions, they're starting to move. So all of these lines of evidence are saying that the system is now moving faster, faster than most models had predicted, say, a decade ago. A lot of talk when we hear about 1.5 and 2 degrees is around, you know, iconic things, such as the Great Barrier yeah. Reef. And I'm not, I'm not pretending for a moment, you know, that wouldn't be a tragedy if that were to, to you know, essentially be all bleached one day. But what about everyday life? For a Melbourneian watching right now or a Sydney cider, we're at 1.1... You know, does 1.5 or does 2 degrees, if we get there and, you know, that, that's the sort of worst extent of it, is their life that different under those circumstances? I think it's going to be quite a bit different. And one of the points we make in this report is there is a big difference between 1.5 and 2. And that's why we emphasise that we need to keep temperature rise as much below 2 as we possibly can. In other words, every tenth of a degree doesn't sound like much but every tenth of a degree really matters. And in why is that? So, so yeah. everyday life, if you're in that city, it might be a bit warmer. Is it more about what happens outside of your actual daily life, um, whether well, that be crops, um, whether that be weather it's, systems? It's going to be more than a bit warmer. In other words, most people assume that everything is linear. It scales with going from 1 to 1.5 to 2. That's not the case. In, in, in science, we call it being highly nonlinear, which means the difference between 1.5 and 2 is much greater than the difference between 1 and 1.5. So for Sydney ciders, Melburnians, wherever you are, extreme heat's going to be much worse uh, than it would be at 1.5. You're talking 5. about a few degrees warmer, maybe, on a record day rather than half a degree. Yeah, so what you see is the extremes move much faster than the average. Right. So, uh, for example... In 2019, the uh, averaged over Australia that year, the extreme high temperatures were half a degree warmer than they've ever been before. So that was... A, and the global average temperature was only a fraction of a tenth of a degree higher, and yet it was a half a degree in terms of our extremes. So this is a common phenomenon that mm. we have to get used to. The, I mean, so far, at, at 1.1, roughly, the overall yes. increase, our maximums have certainly broken a lot of records lately, but they seem to be sort of inching along in terms of the overall maximum temperature? Is it more about the days over 40 and these types of events it's, it's, rather than some one-off 50-degree day? That's right. So, so people should not conflate an average temperature or an increase in average with the extremes you're going to feel. To give people an example of, of really what this means is, mm. if you go back to the last ice age 20,000 years ago when a lot of North America and, and Western Europe was covered with ice, very cold, woolly mammoths around, that was only a four-degree difference in global average temperature. We're headed for half that, two degrees, the other direction. Right. So that gives you an idea of the fact that don't be confused by just averages. On the removal of carbon, this sort of yeah. technology, and I just want to get really broad and hypothetical about sure. this, if you like. Are we looking at a point one day, if this gallops along, and this technology is fantastic, and I might be talking about multiple decades away, where we can essentially control the carbon dioxide overall in the atmosphere and just set it at a really good livable temperature for us, for animals, for crops, everything. Is that the sort of nirvana, if you like? 
Well, that would be an outcome I think that most people would like to see. Obviously, we would like to stabilise the temperature ASAP because we don't have those technologies yet. So step one is to stabilise what's going on now as far below as two as you can. Then I think hopefully if those technologies get developed, you can start drawing down CO2 and then there'll be a debate on you know, how much further you want to go down. Mm -hmm. I think, what level is the best level? Yeah. Well, it's become a debate one day. Yeah, but I think right. actually there is a reference point and that's um, what's called pre-industrial. Uh, which it's, we know humans can thrive in that. We know ecosystems are stable. The planet was stable for nearly 12,000 years in that period. So that's sort of the right. nirvana that you say.